always looking to challenge myself and get outside my comfort zone, so I'm going to try to make it through signing day press conference without saying E-X-C-I-T-E-D, which is virtually impossible. I've seen spoofs on this, but it's a thrilling day. Um, we're happy to be here and, and announce some welcoming or welcome in two additional um, members to our bison family. Uh, our staff's in the back. really appreciate their efforts. Uh, you find it really quickly as a head coach. A lot of the legwork, a lot of the conversations are done beforehand. Um, I'm not going to let them off the hook. It wasn't a whole bunch of airtime or road time this year because of the last 18, 14 months, whatever it's been, has been different. But setting up Zooms, coordinating Zooms, doing those things, uh, appreciate all their efforts too. Um, it, it's certainly uh, fun, uh, but it's been challenging. Uh, we go back to uh, about three or four years ago when – uh, we ended our season too shortly in the Summit League, and, and we talked about, um, you know, needing a certain level of talent, but more, more than anything, needing the right character and needing the right integrity in our, in our locker room. And when we do it the way we do it, it's based on people first, foremost, and always, and, and will continue to be that. And what I'm getting at is the relationship piece has been tough. It's been really tough because of COVID has presented those challenges where, I can't sit in a home. I can't see these kids. Haven't seen some of these guys live. Um, you know, I've never shooken Willie Guy's hand yet. I've never. I haven't shooken uh, Josh Streit's hand yet. Uh, they haven't been in our office. They haven't had the 48-hour official visits with our guys. And so, when you look at how we've been able to, uh, for for the most part, for the last 14 months, get through this process, um, it, it comes as about as good as it can be. Meaning, you know, Willie Guy played for Coach Sash last year. There's a relationship. Now I've worked with Josh Sash for a year. And when he tells me what Willie's about, I have something to base it on. You know, Andrew Coleman um, played AAU with Rocky Cruiser, uh, a, a big piece to that. Uh, I've known Dana, uh, Andrew's dad, for a long time. Um, Andrew just got done playing, you know, with one of my mentors, one of my great friends and Saul Phillips. When I can pick up the phone and talk to Saul about it, you know, that helps bridge that gap. But when they get here in June to start the process within the summer, it's really going to be the first time that I physically lay eyes on them or, or grab them and give them a handshake, give them a hug. And so um, it's been interesting, but a big part of why we've got to where we've gotten to with the kids that we've gotten to uh, is because of relationships. And, and that's what we want to continue to be about. Um, I do want to go back to the November signing and congratulate Andrew Morgan, uh, Coach Anderson, and that program. First state championship in 102 years, a remarkable feat. Um, this is my first opportunity to really publicly talk about Josh, Joshua Streit, um, who we're, we're, we're thrilled to be bringing into the family. He's got a bright future. When you look at um, Andrew and you look at Joshua, two guys that at a land-grant institution in North Dakota State University that, that are all about farm or all about tough or all about blue collar, uh, they're going to be tremendous fits in our program. Um, Willie Guy. Uh, Willie Guy comes in and, and provides some depth at a position we, all, we feel good about. Um, again, there's a relationship piece, and, and Willie's just a winner. Um, he, he's, uh, he's winning, and it's great to see him get the individual acknowledgments. I know he doesn't care about it, but that tells me other coaches, other people in those leagues understand what he's about, and uh, he's, he's, he's not a, like a consistent 20-point scorer guy, but he's going to stuff it, and his teams are going to win, and whether that's a drill, uh, whether that's a game, whether that's a tournament, uh, Willie Guy wins, and obviously that's important. Uh, Andrew Coleman um, really is a complete like Swiss Army knife for us and, and a perfect perfect guy in this situation. We're a bonus year for him and can come in here and can provide some depth, some versatility, and most importantly, some championship level experience. Uh, I, I think, um, I don't think, we, we've talked a lot about it. You look at success in college basketball, uh, Baylor. Uh, you look at uh, teams that we follow and track, like a Loyola, like a Drake, they're older, they're experienced. And, and that's another big part of why we are where we are with the two guys that we, we added to our family. So, um, again, uh, uh, just a fun day, uh, a very important day, um, and, and a challenging day more than ever because we are such a relationship. We are such a character and integrity-based program. Um, so to get from A to B has been different, but we don't feel like we've compromised at all the type of people that we're bringing in. And, and in fact, we're really looking forward to adding them to the fold here this, this summer. I'll take any questions. First of all, congratulations. I think mean, you did make it through that whole thing without saying that. Perfect. Yeah. Um, with Andrew, how difficult is it when you've got 
the percentage of your returning minutes and returning scoring that you have, and this is this kid's one shot, did that come into the conversation at all? Big time. Big time piece of it and a conversation that we had in a debate at times amongst the staff too. And I think what I've learned, Ross, is my obligation is to not do what Dave Richmond wants to do. It's to not do what an individual player wants to do. It's what I feel best is for the program and, and what's best for North Dakota State men's basketball. And we need to continue to move this thing forward. And, and what, what am I getting at is, is we want guys to be extremely happy here, but I don't mind them being uncomfortable. And Andrew knows, same what Jory just told you, we are as upfront, honest, transparent. We promise two things. It's going to be the hardest thing you've ever done and the most fun and rewarding. We didn't guarantee him anything. And he knew that coming in. He wanted to be a part of a team that's got the chance to do what we think we have a chance to do. Uh, Saul conversations, Rocky conversations reassured me he's going to fit tremendously in the locker room. And again, I'm going to sleep well tonight and knowing what I, that I told Andrew, it's going to be the truth. And if he comes in and beats somebody out, so be it. You know, that's, um, th that's not my job to worry about this person or that. If you're scared of competition, if you're one of our eight top guys that are returning and they're all good, they're darn good. Uh, but if you get beat out, you get beat out. If you're scared of competition, we weren't for you in the first place. So um, it, w it was a definitely a conversation. But also, uh, when you look at our roster and where we can add some depth and some versatility, I think Andrew fits some of those needs. Is my understanding from the press release accurate in that Willie, they also, the NCAA doesn't regard his sophomore season either. He has three years to play here. So, yeah, uh, correct. Other than it's the NJCAA. They just had the same exact deal as they had the COVID senior season of competition. So he could have gone back to DMAC this year again and just been a sophomore all over again. But he will come to us, you know, as a, as a sophomore, and he'll have three years left. Yep. Do these two guys offer you the opportunity to play Sam off the ball a little bit more? I think it's a combination of maybe picking and choosing some opportunities to move Sam off the ball, uh, but also especially into some different situations, non-conference, some different time and score situations, just to get Sam off the floor. Uh, Sam's going to be going into his you know fourth year. He's played a lot of minutes. He's been overseas playing, um, and you know our successes uh, have been talked about in 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 March in Sioux Falls, and a big part of that is because we have clear minds and fresh legs in March. And, and so um, I, that's, that's a big piece of it. Now, if one of them comes in and beats Sam out, it's what it is. Now, <laughs> you know, for, for the relationship that I have with Sam, for what he did last year and where he wants to play and some of those things, it's going to be tough. But, again, like it's, it's, it's out there for everybody. And I think I, we have a chance to be very deep, very versatile, and make for some really competitive practices. And when you're practicing at a high level every day, you're getting better and preparing at a higher level for games. From a roster standpoint, how many went in and how many came out? Do you still have room? Yeah, we will uh, almost for sure, Ross, we'll take one more. Um, and we might play around with, with the second one. Again, um, if, if and when we sign one more, just like Jory said, it would feel very comfortable with that. There's a lot of things that go into it, meaning – uh, roster size. You know, you come to our practices. We don't practice very long. I don't like guys just standing around. Uh, you know, we're at 13, 13 guys now. We add one. It's 14. It's been a very comfortable number. You know, in in the past. And then the also goes back to again the relationship piece. I'm hoping we get some some news here this week where some things are going to open up and at least we can get some guys to campus and they can come visit us. And uh, furthermore, even even better, we'd uh, get out and hopefully see them in July as well. Coach, with adding a couple of transfers this year, has it been crazier trying to navigate the portal with how many guys have already gotten in the portal and knowing what the rule that might get voted in tomorrow? Yeah, I mean, I, I can't speak for all of our assistants, you know, but I, 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 knew, I do know that we've uh, – it's not like we're actively just diving into the portal. It, it is certainly uh, here. I think it's here to stay. It's something that you need to embrace. Um, but I don't want to be scrambling in, in the portal every year. If there's a certain position need, even like a JUCO, a, a junior college kid, like if it's a, um, a need, something to reassure something, if it's a want, if it's something to help us get a little bit older in a position, it's something that we're, we're not going to shy away from. It's something that we're going to embrace. Uh, that being said, you know, we would be um, in an insane asylum trying to go through over 1,300 kids to try to figure out who's who potentially getting voted in tomorrow. Is that a good thing for college basketball, seeing how crazy this offseason's already been? If you know me, I'm a guy that give me the parameters, I'm going to work within those parameters. So to say this, to say that, it is what it is, right? I'm, I, 
probably some at some point my vote was heard that you know on some email or survey I responded but they're gonna they're gonna vote on it and it is what it is and uh, you, you're seeing some change into the guard some older guys that are you know maybe voicing of some frustrations like I'm I'm not like it, it's uh, it is what it is and I still want the opportunity to have the feelings of joy after a victory I still want them as sick as this sounds the, the misery of defeat afterwards and figuring out how we're going to get better the competitive fix the relationship and so uh, I and we all need to embrace what's come and figure out the ways the best. The one thing that you know we stressed to our guys the other day is what we're not going to apologize for is the relationships that we do have with our guys and, and the, the guys that want to come back. Um, uh, and and that, that's a big part of it. Our guys, you know, there's, there's that happy medium. They, they really like it here. They're happy here, yet they're uncomfortable. They know they're getting challenged. And it's, we spend a lot of our time – with our guys in our offices, you know, spending quality relationships outside of the game of basketball, so they so they do want to stay here, so they they are happy here. I think the reality of the one-time transfer will be for these guys. You said there's 1,300. There's over 1,300. Over 1,300. Yeah. When do you think reality, or what's your thought on? Not all 13 are going to guess and end up with a scholarship. Yeah, I think I think the first and foremost, Jeff, is I think you need to not label everybody in the portal for certain reasons meaning like uh, we have an honest transparent conversation we have three guys that are in the, in the portal that I would have loved to have come back but I was honest with how I saw their role in playing time more likely being next year so they're in there for different reasons I think you have other guys that think the grass is greener on the other side I think you're seeing a few more numbers this year because Tyler Witts he gets a bonus year Andrew Coleman they get they get a bonus year uh, me and, and again maybe you can, we can go back and visit this here in a couple years but Probably a little bit of it is a fad, you know, where my buddy's doing it. Or if I open it up, I'm going to go on social media and I'm going to get some likes and retweets and some things like that, some short-term fixes for what probably isn't a best long-term solution. But there's also some great things about the portal, in my opinion, too. And, and that's something that we all need to look through and embrace almost on a case-by-case -case basis. More kids doing this in the first year or two and then quiet it down, or do you think it'll be every year? Yeah, I, yeah. I I don't know if I have that specific answer for you, Jeff. Um, we talked about it. We had a head coach at Zoom with the Summit League, and Matt Painter's come out with some things where maybe uh, you can't do it within your first or second year. I like that, you know, because what somebody told me a long time ago in coaching, as a head coach, you're looking a lot of these kids in the eye and telling them for the first time, you no, you're not good enough. And so when they hear that. They're looking for someone to tell them yes, or you know, you are good enough at that, and they're running. And more likely, they're going to hear the same thing I just told them from somebody else. And so, if we put some parameters on that, I think that would be good. To answer your question, you know, probably what drives my my wife nuts and why Coach Sash, this is a great game and a different in a, in a messed up profession at times. These are 16 to 22 year old kids, and I know who I was and the decisions that were going through my head at that time too. So. Um, it's certainly interesting times, and but uh, we need to embrace it. What happens with it, we'll see. Summer league stipulation. You talking about Painter, like first two years in general? Yes, yes, yes. General, Correct. Correct. I, I, in my opinion, that's what I struggle with the most when it comes to a transfer. You know, we we have what I've learned in seven years going into my eighth year as head coach is. After two and a half, three years of conversations, working with somebody, if something's not clicking or it's just not working, I don't know if it's going to work. But there's also some struggles that you just have to be willing to battle through. Um, look at Baylor's roster. Some of those kids redshirted. They bought their time. Uh, those are unique, fun stories for me. We've got those, those young men, those young ladies that stick things out too through some adversity, adverse times are going to be really prepared because that's life. That's life as a parent. That's life as a husband. That's life as an employee-employer.